Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency that went viral. In this video, we look at Bitcoin's history, which is not even a decade old, but Bitcoin's price hit almost $6,000 a few days back. I'm Niall, a licensed wealth manager at Samt AG Switzerland. It all started in 2008 at the peak of financial crisis. Satoshi Nakamoto came up with the idea of creating decentralized currency. He published a paper in October 2008 introducing peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. I think it's important to mention this since the debate whether it's a currency or an asset is always around. For quite some time, people thought that this person was Satoshi. He's not. Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym used by a person or a group. No one really knows. Moving forward to January 2009, Bitcoin Network came alive after Satoshi released the open source code. The first block had a reward of 50 Bitcoins. I know. Even I wasn't aware what mining or block meant until 2014. The term mining means to solve math problems. According to the protocol of the cryptocurrency in our case, it's Bitcoin. And they do this to validate a transaction, which is also called a block. When a person solves it before the others, he gets a reward. Bitcoin. If it doesn't make sense yet, pretty sure it doesn't. There's a video link in the description that explains the process in about 8 minutes. Okay, so back to the history lesson. This is the Genesis block, and here Satoshi started it all. Notice how it reads generation 50 in the column with the heading from. Normally, this is where the sending Bitcoin address is supposed to be. So Bitcoins were created from where? Out of thin air, of course, which is not very different from fiat currency. In case you're wondering what the price of Bitcoin was in those days, initially it didn't have any price. So it used to be auctioned off on web forums where the highest bidder would buy thousands of coins for a few dollars. Later in 2010, a programmer from Florida bought two pizzas from Papa Jones for 10,000 Bitcoins. At that time, one Bitcoin was worth less than a cent. And today, the same number of Bitcoins would amount to over $50 million. In August of the same year, a major bug was discovered in the Bitcoin protocol. For a while, the transactions were not being completely verified before including them in the blockchain. Again, please watch the video mentioned in the description if you don't know blockchain. And this allowed users to bypass Bitcoin's economic restrictions and create infinite Bitcoins. And they did. The user exploited the loophole and created more than 184 billion, with a B, Bitcoins in a single transaction. However, in a few hours, the transaction was spotted and erased. Later, the bug was fixed and network upgraded its protocol, a process known as a fork. In 2010, after Visa, MasterCard, PayPal and other financial companies declined services to WikiLeaks, a debate broke out on Bitcoin's official web forum about the risks of donating to WikiLeaks using Bitcoin, that it would attract unwanted government interest in the nascent cryptocurrency. One poster wrote, basically, bring it on. And Satoshi responded, no, don't bring it on. The project needs to grow gradually. And six days later, Satoshi vanished from the scene forever after posting this message. In 2011, Bitcoin gained parity with US dollar, a milestone indeed. In July the same year, we saw its first bubble at $30. It had its first crash, dropping down to $2. Following the footsteps of Linux Foundation and the Tor project, the Bitcoin Foundation was launched to establish Bitcoin as a payments platform and a non-political unit of account. In November, WordPress started accepting Bitcoin as payment. The year 2013 was quite eventful in the short life of Bitcoin. Coinbase, which is a Bitcoin-based payment processor, reported to have sold $1 million worth of Bitcoins at $22 per coin in February. But the next month, Bitcoin split into two. What that means is that the blockchain, which is the soul of the Bitcoin, split into two chains, different and independent of each other. And this was not done based on any consensus. This circus continued for six hours. Both chains carried different transaction history, which is bizarre considering that there was one currency. The core developers called for a temporary halt to transactions, which triggered a sharp sell-off, pushing the price down to 37 from 48. Mountain Gox, which was a Tokyo-based Bitcoin exchange that handled about 70% of the Bitcoin transactions worldwide, halted Bitcoin deposits, and this caused a dip of 23%. But this drop in price only lasted a few hours as Bitcoin regained its previous price. 
In the same month, FinCEN dropped a small hammer on Bitcoin economy, categorizing it as a money service business, which basically means that the business needs to register with the federal government, which basically means that the government can collect information about the customers, which is a tactic aimed to counter money laundering. These requirements put a squeeze on Bitcoin economy because it was supposed to be the rebel currency, free from banks and government influence. Previously, FinCEN had done the same to Facebook credits, categorizing them as money service business. At this time, Bitcoin was still in the let's see where it goes phase for professional traders. In the aftermath of the Greece bailout, the Greeks felt insecure depositing money into their accounts because they couldn't even access their own cash stored in the nation's bank. Bitcoin, on the other hand, suddenly felt more secure than banks. Hua! Bitcoin trades from Greece shot up 79% within a few weeks. As a result, Bitcoin crossed $100 mark, then $200, then $250, and then it fell down to $76. The price movement from $266 to $76 and then to $160 occurred only within 6 hours. And if you're thinking that's some serious volatility, check the price charts from this year because in 2017, Bitcoin's on steroids. Anyways, this particular fluctuation was due to Bit Instant and Mountain Gox being unable to manage the trading volume. From March till September, Bitcoin kept crossing and dropping the $100 mark. The reasons were plenty, such as OKCupid okay and Foodler accepting Bitcoin payments, the US authorities seizing accounts associated with Mountain Gox, the DEA seizing Bitcoins, M-Pesa in Kenya integrating Bitcoin, the Foreign Exchange Administration and Policy Department in Thailand, that's a mouthful, banned trading Bitcoin on local exchanges. A federal judge in Texas ruling that Bitcoins are a currency or a form of money, and German finance ministry referring to Bitcoins as a unit of account, which made them vulnerable to legal and tax implications. Now we enter October 2013 when FBI seized 26,000 Bitcoins from the Darknet website, Silk Road, which was just Amazon for illegal drugs. Two companies, Robocoin and Bitcoiniacs, launched Bitcoin ATM machines in Canada. In the same month, Chinese Google Beidou also announced that it would be accepting Bitcoin payments. The biggest private university in Cyprus announced that it would start accepting tuition fees in Bitcoins. November 2013 is also significant in the life of a four-year-old coin because it crossed a $1,000 milestone, reaching a market cap of over $10 billion and also because China emerged as its major player. Bitcoin China surpassed Japanese Mountain Gox and European Bitstamp to become the largest Bitcoin exchange in the world. It closed $5 million Series A for the Chinese institutional investor Lightspeed. And understandably, the voices of Bitcoin bubble started to surface again. Once Bitcoin crossed the 1000 mark, it started a whole new journey. Since then, there has been a lot of trader-driven volatility. A number of highly leveraged exchanges have also emerged since then. 2014 gave a great start to Bitcoin. On January 1st, Bitcoin was trading at 770, but the rest of the year didn't prove as promising as 2013. In fact, it dropped to about $150 by the year end. And many said, aha, told you it was a bubble. But there was another reason than sheer skepticism, a real problem, and Bitcoin faces it even today. It's a problem of its real world usage. With brutal honesty, five main uses of Bitcoin are donating to causes and buying goods and services that the government doesn't approve of, hiding assets from governments and soon-to-be spouse, gambling, obviously, and cross-border value exchange. A major blow to Bitcoin occurred in 2014 when Mountain Gox filed for bankruptcy after suspending withdrawals. 744,000 Bitcoins were stolen during the Mountain Gox episode. Yup, that happened. Anyways, we should look at the good stuff, right? Besides, I already get hate for questioning Bitcoin's fundamental value. I've always appreciated blockchain technology and smart contracts, but when it comes to Bitcoin price, my eyes squint. Some of the cool stuff for Bitcoin in 2014 included Zynga, Newegg, Dell, the D Las Vegas Hotel, and Golden Gate Hotel announced that they would be accepting Bitcoin. By the way, D Las Vegas mentioned you cannot gamble with Bitcoin there. BitPay announced that it would be sponsoring St. Petersburg Bowl, renaming it to Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl. And in the last major event of 2014, Microsoft began accepting Bitcoin to buy Xbox games and Windows software. 2015 was a good year for Bitcoin. During the first week, it was trading just under 300, but then dropped to 173. Analysts started saying that Bitcoin was stuck in self-reinforcing negative price cycle. 
The good news was that Coinbase raised $75 million as part of a Series C funding. Bad news was that 19,000 Bitcoins were stolen, again, this time from Bitstamp. At that time, those many Bitcoins were only worth about $5 million. Good news was that 21 Inc. raised $116 million in venture funding. Nothing too significant happened for the rest of 2015, except that more merchants started to accept Bitcoin. Good news helped raise its price. Even Barclays announced that they would facilitate Bitcoin and a few others, especially if users would like to donate to charity. By December 2015, over 160,000 merchants accepted Bitcoin. Now we enter 2016. The cabinet of Japan recognized Bitcoin and a few others as similar to real money. Steam started accepting Bitcoins for gaming and other online media. Later in July, a paper was published to show that Bitcoin economy had grown and matured from SIN towards legitimate enterprises. But then in August, Bitfinex was hacked and 120,000 Bitcoins were stolen. Again. However, Bitcoin kept growing in terms of acceptance. By September 2016, there were 771 Bitcoin ADMs worldwide. Swiss railway operator upgraded their automated machines to buy tickets using Bitcoin. And now we come to 2017, the year when Bitcoin broke all records. It started off at over $1,000. More and more retailers started accepting it. The transactions increased many folds worldwide. Japan and Russia gave solid indications of accepting it as a legal payment system. Norway's largest internet-based bank allowed users to integrate Bitcoin accounts on company's platform. In March 2017, Bitcoin price surpassed the price of an ounce of gold. This was probably more significant than achieving dollar parity or crossing $1,000 mark because Bitcoin enthusiasts had been comparing it to gold, calling it digital gold. The main trigger for achieving this milestone were the rumors that the SEC will approve a Bitcoin-based exchange-traded fund. Later, they turned down the proposal. Regardless of the ETF not making it, there have been fireworks on Bitcoin price charts in 2017. It reached its highest price of 1402 on May 1st, 1800 on May 11th, and crossed $2,000 on May 20th. And you probably know the rest of the story because after it crossed 2000 the world went mad. On August 1st, Bitcoin split into two independent currencies. Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. August 5th, Bitcoin crossed $3,000 mark. August 12th, $4,000. And on September 1st, $5,000. In September, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said in an interview, Bitcoin is a fraud. And these four words were enough to impact Bitcoin trades and its price fell by 8%. Quite recently, Dimon also said that people who buy Bitcoin are stupid. September was also crucial for Bitcoin as China announced that it was shutting down domestic Bitcoin exchanges as well as banning ICOs, otherwise known as initial coin offerings. The negative market sentiment was severe. On September 15th, Bitcoin fell below $3,000. Despite these events, Bitcoin remained resilient. On October 15th, it reached its highest ever, trading at $5,856. Just remember, at one time, someone bought two pizzas for 10,000 bitcoins. To recap, let's look at a colorful timeline for bitcoin while some soothing music plays in the background. Oh yeah, one more thing. This symbol means when a business accepts bitcoin payments or facilitates it in some way. There you have it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you want to become part of our exclusive members list, you can do that by signing up for my webinar for free. 
links in the description. I'm Nile from SamDG and I'll see you soon.